Hello everyone and welcome back to another PM Studios C Sharp programming tutorial. Today we are going to be going over for loops for our sixth installment within this video series. Um, again, I am trying to uh, make a new different example for, for each object in every different lesson set so that you're not just redoing the exact same programs over and over again. Add a little spice to the life, if I may. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start off with a couple ints. We're going to go T units, G units, solution, and we're going to set that to one right off the bat, and then total. And again, as I have mentioned in pre several previous uh, tutorials before, you can use uh, you can put every single one of these on their own independent line and declare them each as int to integers but saving space on the uh, the actual code itself by declaring them all on the same line under the category of integer saves time and space and makes it a little more readable so that's the reason why I do that. I'm going to create a character do again and folks get, go, go ahead and get used to the do again character because uh, from here on out we are pretty much going to be doing looping so that the people don't have to restart the program every time they want to use it. So we're going to go boolean and set that as decision and equal that to true right off the bat and then first thing we're going to do is going to go into a while loop and this will indeed be our uh, our repeat loop so decision equals equals true don't forget the double equals because that is a comparison operator and not an assignment operator and once we assign that we're going to go solution equals one and that is an assignment operator and the reason why is because when we run through this we want to refresh the solution to one because it'll only assign it there and actually we could get rid of that right there so we could just say solution and declare it as an integer right there and then define it down here so that it's always equal to one whenever we run through the loop again and that will save us some processing power as well so console dot right line we can go please enter the total number of units and then we're going to do the and then single quotes here the n if i can type it right in n p r okay and as some of you uh... who are mathematically inclined probably have noticed and even some of you who aren't necessarily mathematically inclined um, we are doing a permutation calculator inside this tutorial series and we will be coming back in another tutorial later in the series uh, with which we we touch on this and make it a lot more compartmentalized so that you can just slap on pretty much any other type of operation you want uh, that's inside the realm of this so you could also put in the um, factorial calculator from the Java programming series that, uh, that I posted before this t tutorial series and you can also put on any other essentially any other type of equation that you wanted so we're going to do t units e equals convert dot two int sixteen and again the reason why we do uh, two int sixteen is because the numbers that we're going to be working with aren't necessarily going to be that large but if you wanted to play it safe, you could most certainly do a 2 and 32 or a 2 and 64. It's entirely up to you. But for the sake of this tutorial series, because I'm only going to be doing one example for you guys, I'm going to run it as a 2 and 16. Read line. And that will assign us an integer, integer value through the use of a string, which is the only input method there is. So that'll be convenient for us and we're also going to do another console not constant console dot write line please enter the ooh not enter the grouping of units from the total really not sure if I could phrase that any better the R in NPR. There we go. You kind of want to put as much description as you can in a small space so that even if they don't understand what I mean by the grouping of units from the total, they can see the R in NPR. Oh, okay. 
then we're going to do G units. Convert dot two and sixteen again, and we're in the console dot read line. Alrighty, and from here, this is where we're going to start implementing the other three variables that we haven't touched on yet. We're going to do total equals t units minus g units. And for those of you who are in math, you will know that um, the entire way you find permutations is that you take the total and you divide it by, or you take the factorial of the total and you divide it by the factorial of the grouping, and then you just multiply out whatever's left. So essentially what you do is you subtract however many, or you subtract up to the largest number in the grouping factorial. So. That's why we do that, because what we're doing is we're taking out the grouping factorial up to the largest, and what we have left is what we'd multiply out. So, just a little explanation on that. 4 int temp, and you could call this x or y or z or whatever you like, but I'm just going to do temp for the sake of it, because that's really all that it is, is a temporary variable. T units. So we're assigning temp to t units, which is the full value so, and then we're going to do temp is, as long as temp is greater than total, temp minus minus. So what that does is it assigns um, whatever the largest value is to temp. And then it says as long as temp is larger than whatever this value is right here, then we're going to run through what's ever in the for loop and then subtract one at the end. So, and once we do that, we're going to do solution times equals, we're going to do temp, there we go. Alright, so for those of you who are confused by this times equal, it's nothing daunting. I believe I have done a plus equals in the past, but essentially what it means is solution equals solution times temp. And that is also why we always need to keep solution set to 1 whenever we reset the loop is because if you don't, then it's going to go way out of bounds really fast. But if you leave it set to zero whenever you loop through it, um, anything times zero is zero. So you're not going to get anything in return if you do that. That's why we set it to, um, to one every time we run through the loop. We're going to go ahead and do times equals. Save some computing space. Alrighty, and then we're just going to tell them what it is, and then we're going to prompt them to reuse it. So, console dot right line the solution to your permutation is a solution. And we're going to add a period at the end and then close that out, and then console. Now, here's your choices here. You can either do read line to, uh, to pause the program and have them prompt, or you can get rid of the read line and just do console dot write line. Would you like to run this program again? Y or N. Alrighty. I'm going to close up the quotes, parentheses, etc. Got an extra space there. And then we're going to do do again equals convert dot two character console. And I know I've done the two character in the last tutorial. Read line. Alrighty, and then we just need to throw in our uh, our if statement, and then we'll be good to go. Where well, whereas I'm going to show you another way to do the if statement to save some space and time. Uh, whereas last time we did the do again equals equals y or do again equals equals capital Y. And then we plugged in, uh, I believe it was decision 
equals decision just so that it stayed where it was or we plugged in decision equals true so it would stay where it was um, what we're going to do this time just to make it so that we can get rid of that else statement because it is kind of bulky that way I'm going to change these to not trues okay so we're going to say if do again is not equal to y or not equal to capital y only instead of or we're going to do and so if do again is not equal to lowercase y and do again is not equal to uppercase y we're going to say decision equals false now the reason why we wouldn't do or is because say we enter lowercase y it's going to see okay it does equal lowercase y um, then it's going to run through the or or does it equal uppercase y that's no and it only needs one false to carry on through and cancel out the program so it would go through and set it to false anyways even though we did set it to something appropriate so that's why we do and because we need um, we need both of them to return false to carry on I guess is what I'm trying to say or yeah rather both of them to return true to end the program so sorry if I confuse some of you um, let's go ahead and run this real quick as you can see no errors that's all hunky dory please enter the total number of units the n and the npr so let's go ahead and do 15 alright enter the r we're gonna do 4 for that one and it says 32,760 um, if you guys want to work it on your, on your calculators or do it on pen and paper or just look up the answer online uh, you will see that that is correct so I'm gonna go ahead and enter yes and as you can see it went through just fine do it again okay enter no and it closes out just fine fantastic okay so I uh, hope you guys got a good general idea of how to use for loops here I know it's not the uh, the most shining and inter uh, most shining and intricate example of for loops but I do want to just set the stage with this program because we will be coming back to it in the methods tutorial which I believe is um, episode number nine in this series yeah episode number nine is methods um, we are going to come back to this, compartmentalize it, and make it a little more snazzy. Um, it'll it'll probably double in length, but it'll become such a, a useful and functional tool. And we'll probably be revisiting it yet again inside um, episode 10, which is the cover over classids and method encapsulation. Encapsul wow, I can't talk. Encapsulation. So that's it for today's tutorial. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. And I hope to see you next tutorial.